What is up, everyone? I'm James Q. Quick, a developer advocate here at Auth0. And I was thinking, it's really easy to get started in Auth0 with a database connection, but what if you want to turn on a social connection like Twitter? Well, that's what we're going to cover in this video. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so before we actually uh, get into the execution of enabling a Twitter login, I want to take a second just to give you some context as to why. Now, when you create an application in Auth0, like you'll see in a second, uh, by default, you get kind of this database interaction where users can log, they can sign up and log in with their email and password credentials. And that is a little bit of a pain sometimes for a lot of people because they have all of these accounts and different apps uh, across, uh, across the web and they, uh, they don't like creating new credentials for uh, different websites. So one of the beneficial things of having a social provider like Twitter is giving them the ability to log in with an account that they already have created, which is pretty powerful. Additionally, we could kind of take some of that Twitter information about the profile of the user and kind of enrich the information that we store about the user. But predominantly, we're giving a better user experience by allowing the user to log in with something that they're comfortable with. So I'm gonna start on the Auth0 homepage, auth0.com. And uh, first off, we've got a brand new design uh, that you should probably see. We're doing a little A-B testing, but you'll probably see this by the time the video is out. So let us know in the comments below what you think of this new design. I am particularly excited about it. I think it looks amazing. So if you don't have an Auth0 account, you'll need to sign up. It's free. There's a link below for you to sign up so you can do that to follow along. When you do sign in, you will be prompted to create a tenant if you haven't already. And a tenant is basically a grouping of applications. So you can see I'm in my James Q Quick demos dash two. You can imagine I do a lot of demos. That's the tenant I'm in. And then I'm going to create an application. And what we'll do is create a single page application, download the sample code for a React project just to speed the process up, get that working, and then we'll add Twitter login on top of it, which will be pretty neat. Uh, if you want to know the uh, full process for working with React uh, user authentication with Auth0, there's a crash course and workshop video that you can check out, which follows the blog post from Dan Arias, which is super in-depth and really, really uh, good to follow. So you can check that out if you want to. So let's go ahead and create a web application. We'll create, make sure it's single page web application, and then we'll say this is gonna be React and Twitter and go ahead and create this. And one of the cool things that Auth0 does, uh, does a pretty good job at, is it gives you these quick starts. So once you create the application, you can click on a technology for your quick start. See Dan Arias is mentioned here again. You can download the sample source code. So that's what we're gonna do. And we'll come back to these settings here in a second. Let's go ahead and download the source code. And then if we look at these settings, what this is saying is we need to update a few settings inside of Auth0 so it knows where we can come from to do the authentication process. And what this means is to do the authentication workflow from our application, you redirect a user to Auth0 Auth0 handles the authentication, which may include sending the user to Twitter and then sends them back to our application. So these are settings that Auth0 needs to know for all of that to work. So I'm gonna copy this one example of the uh, localhost 3000 and come into my settings. Notice that the domain and the client ID, we'll reference those in a second. And then scroll down at my settings to allowed callback URLs, paste that in, allowed logout URLs, and then the allowed web origins. So once you have all of those pasted in there, scroll down to your save changes to make sure that those actually get saved. So that looks good. All of those details are set. Let's open up this project inside of here. And I've got a quick action uh, to be able to open this folder in VS Code. If you're interested on how I did that, let me know in the comments below. I think it's pretty cool. So with this code open, the first thing I wanna look at is inside of source, there is an auth config JSON file. And notice that it's got those two properties that I mentioned from the application settings uh, being the domain and the client ID. In this case, we're not gonna use the audience, so we can go ahead and get rid of that and then uh, save this auth config file. All right, and then from there, in the terminal, we'll need to do an npm install to install all of these packages. So I'll run the install process, uh, wait a few seconds, and then we'll come back and get this running. All right, so that process has finished uh, and we should be able to just run this application. Now I'm gonna run the spa command and you can find this listed in the package.json and it will run just the React application. So we'll have this run and once this is up and running, we should be able to go ahead and do this login process with our email and password. So the database connection that comes by default with Auth0 applications. 
All right, so that loaded up. We should be able to initiate this login process. It will uh, ask us to log in. Now I've already created an account under this tenant in my testing. So that's what I'm logging in with here. If you have not, you'll need to sign up with an email and password. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and check this for those permissions and come back and I'm logged in and you can even see information about my user inside of this profile tab. That's really neat. Uh, the fact that this works with the sample source code in just a few minutes is amazing. But now let's take it one step further and let's add this social connection with Twitter. So inside of the connections tab on the left, there is a social button and we can uh, go ahead and click to create a social connection. We'll scroll down to get to Twitter. All right, uh, we'll say continue. Yes, uh, Twitter, Auth0 will need to be able to do these things to facilitate that Twitter uh, interaction. And what this is basically saying here is we need to go into the developer portal inside of Twitter. We need to create a project and an application and then get the application consumer API key and API secret. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's uh, go to developer.twitter.com and I'm already signed in with my Twitter account. So I'm gonna go to the developer portal. And then inside of the portal, we'll need to create a project and a project can be basically a grouping of applications. And these are necessary for access to the V2 endpoints. We're not gonna necessarily work with those right now, but we will create a project for this to work. So we'll call this Auth0 Twitter integration. That'll be the name of it. It's gonna ask us, what's the use case? Uh, we're really just kind of exploring here. We're kind of testing this out, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so we'll do that and then we'll say uh, testing the Twitter connection with auth zero and uh, which app well let's just create one from scratch to make sure that we're on the same page so we'll call this auth zero twitter demo and go ahead and complete this will create that application and it will give us those two credentials that we need the api key as well as the secret key so i'm going to copy the api key and we'll come and put that into here and then i'll grab the API secret key and put that in here. And you can grab those credentials if you want to. I will delete them by the time the video is out so you won't be able to hack me. Uh, but we'll make sure we'll get uh, all of those in there. And the last thing we need to do, uh, there's actually uh, a little blurb in here, enable the third party authentication. And by the way, this is the setup guide with all the steps that you might want. So we'll need to enable third party authentication. And this, the wording on this is slightly different where if we go into the app settings, there's uh, and click on the app and then go into its settings. There is the three-legged OAuth uh, is disabled. So we want to enable that. We want to enable three-legged OAuth. And then there's two properties we have to fill out, the callback URLs and the website URL. And this again is knowing where to redirect from Twitter back to Auth0 to then have Auth0 redirect to us. So um, actually I've got this in here. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and just paste it in but what this is, in case you need to know how to figure this out, this is HTTPS, then our domain, then login, this, then callback. So uh, if you remember, our domain is actually in the auth config up here. So you could copy it from there and or you could go back to the application settings in Auth0 to get it. So there's that. And then uh, we will have our website URL is going to be HTTPS colon slash slash and then the domain again. So all of that stuff looks good. We should be able to come down and save. Those settings are good. Go back to our social connections. Uh, we'll close the guide here. We will create this thing, go ahead and create it. And then one thing we need to make sure we do is enable that social connection for our application. So re React and Twitter, hit that switch, we'll enable it. And then I wanna go and try this connection to make sure that it works. I'm already logged in, so it skipped a step. I'll show you the full authentication process here in a second. Uh, cool, so that worked. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is completely log out of the dashboard and out of Twitter. So we'll make sure we log out of this completely. That looks good. Now let's go back to the sample application that we have running here. Let us log out of this one. Make sure we'll give this a good uh, refresh so that uh, it knows to load the new page. And then when we click login, it's gonna redirect us to that same uh, workflow, that same login, but this time sign in with Twitter is enabled. So now uh, you can see my Twitter account here, James Key Quick, if you wanna follow me on Twitter and uh, go ahead and sign in and then I'll get redirected back to the application, have to grant those that access again. And if we look at the profile, now we get that user information, which is pretty sweet.
So all of that stuff is working well inside of our demo application, working with not only the database connection, but now also a social connection with Twitter. So that is all it takes to add a Twitter social connection to your application. There's lots of other potential social connections that you can do, Facebook and GitHub and Discord if you wanted to. So if you're interested in seeing how to do other social connections, let us know in the comments below. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching it and we'll catch you in the next one.